Greetings, dapplings. Have you ever found yourself wondering what it would be like to play a game like They Are Billions with a bit more of a don't starve aesthetic? Well, wonder no more. For in today's first taste, we're going to be checking out Dream Engines Nomad Cities. Or as I have come to think about this game, Tim Burton's Factorio. It is a survival city builder with a very, very strong identity, a very firm theme and aesthetic. Kind of, kind of um, dreamlike cross with maybe a little bit nightmarish. You guys all think, think uh, Nightmare Before Christmas style of uh, of Twisted. Now, this game has recently released into early access. In fact, released only yesterday on the 14th of July as the posting of this video. I've had the opportunity to uh, look into this game for a couple of days now prior to its release. I'm very, very happy to be able to share this with you. And indeed, as with all of my first days, if by the end of the video you feel that you enjoyed what you saw and you want to see more, then do let me know with a comment or a like down below, and perhaps we will see this blossom into an extended first taste, or maybe even more. There's quite a lot of uh, content already in the game, so uh, well, well more than I'm going to be able to cover in one episode, but I will certainly try to do it justice all the same. Now, we're going to start a new game. There are different uh, different uh, styles of game that you can unlock. We're, we're kind of in a post-apocalypse, though the exact nature of the apocalypse or, or how post we are, really, really can't tell. And perhaps we'll never be able to tell, but uh, as you progress through the game, you'll be able to unlock other, other uh, factions. There are three currently, though the Tesla Krats, Honestly, the name alone makes me want to play them. Uh, they're currently uh, locked whilst we're in early access, but we can only go with the Junk Lords at the very beginning until we have uh, accomplished a few in-game uh, milestones before we can unlock the second. Now, one thing I do want to draw attention to, we're, we're going to take just a few more moments before we jump into the game proper, I really want to draw attention to how good the difficulty selection in this game is. It hasn't got your, your standard easy, normal, hard, or, or anything like that. It's got a very, very wide-ranging set of difficulties, from super relaxed, really you're under no particular pressure, to, no, this is really going to be hard, and you're going to have to have your thinking cap on to be able to think your way out of the puzzles that this game is going to throw in front of you. One of the things that uh, I particularly liked is the idea of the threat increase rate and the global infestation. These, in particular, you can kind of think like uh, faster than light in the way that you both have this kind of pressure within a sector to get to the end of the sector before the enemies come crashing down and the rebel fleet catches up with you. But you're always forced to progress to the next highest difficulty sector. And throughout the game, each sector becomes progressively more difficult. Well, if you do like the challenge of being, you know, having an enemy, having something to uh, cut your teeth on, we within the, the game, but you don't really want to have to constantly escalate that challenge. You can just change the global infestation, I, I love that. You can even just straight up turn enemies off if you just want the city build apart with a bit less focus on survival. But uh, for the sake of the first taste, uh, we'll grab the uh, economic challenge, or we'll pop this one on. Uh, it gives us a, a relatively good spread of things will be hard, and they'll also be uh, a little bit more forgiving in certain areas. I'm going to forgo the tutorial this time. We're just going to jump straight into the game. Now, our city shall be named Squeaky Shire. I'm almost tempted to keep that, but no, of course, we're going to be the Dapper Dell. There we are. Though perhaps a Dapper Dream would have been more thematic. Uh, one of the really nice uh, elements to this game is the idea of progressing from map to map, very much like, like Faster Than Light sectors, in that you will uh, be able to lift off the city. This, this large platform that we've got here, we can actually take this with us. We've got fuel we can take off, and then we go to a different map with different, um, different uh, parameters. Uh, perhaps gathering will be harder, or the enemy will be more fierce. Welcome to Dream Engines. The tutorial is disabled, but the milestones at the top right of the screen are there to help guide you. Mouse over a milestone to learn more about it. Thank you very much indeed. We can uh, switch between modes. There's the building mode, and then there's the wandering around mode. We are, in fact, tiny. 
over here. A little crossbow-wielding, punchy robot who will be used to explore the map and find resources and then bring those resources back to base. We'll probably also find enemies. and <laughs> We may, in fact, bring some of those enemies back to base, so that is not what we're going out there to do. That's more of a side effect of uh, and the necessity of finding some gear. Okay, so I've got a bit of an idea of some of the materials around us. This is our home, and if we uh, press E there, we can see that we've got a few things inside. We're, we're actually starting to generate some things, but as with many survival city builders, the, the first part is to actually build some stuff. We're going to need some workers. We've got 10 out of 10 workers currently uh, currently around, but we've got food inside the city, and I would like that food to be delivered to the people outside. Uh, where should we start this off? I think we'll start it off about here. We'll pop down two uh, little, little homes here. This is very similar in some respects to a game that... Uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with if you've uh, been on my channel for a while. Factory Town. There we go. We've set up a little a little conveyor belt. And this is where the whole factorio element comes in. We have got to manage production lines and refining resources in, into ever more important resources. Uh, the survival element is that our citizens can die. We need to feed them. We also need to protect them from, from enemies. Uh, some of the enemies are over here. Thankfully, we are... Oh, we have bitten off a little bit more than we can chew, but uh, it does seem that we're on a uh, somewhat forgiving level in terms of the uh, difficulty of the enemies. That will increase over time. We're also picking up some loot from these enemies. Let's uh, clear up this little area, but let's try and draw them back a little bit more so collecting the loot will be a little bit easier for me. Now, I guess I'll let one of these actually attack so you can see that some the enemies, the, the little crawly ones, the little purple ones, they're more of a melee focus, whereas the uh, red ones are a bit more range focus. Now, some of the scrap around here we can uh, break down and we get all sorts of doodads from the old world. Uh, there we are. But these are not the resources that we came out here for. These are more opportunity um, acquisitions rather than the focus of our exploration. We want to hook up a node. Now, I guess you could think of the nodes in the way that uh, the nodes work in Satisfactory, for example. In Satisfactory, you tend to uh, find like a, a, a iron deposit node and pop down a miner and it doesn't really run out. And let's see if I can grab this without annoying the horde. Yeah, there we are. Uh, it doesn't really run out. Whereas in fact, are you? You've got uh, d like uh, discrete um, collections of iron on the ground, and as you mine it, it goes away, and so you're constantly having to move your your. Uh, mining operations around a bit. In this, it's not quite uh, the same. You know what? I'm going to get a little bit punchy myself. There we go. That's a little bit... Uh, not really. Uh, you were sitting underneath my chassis. How rude. Uh, but uh, melee can be quite uh, quite functional against uh, primarily ranged opponents, as you might imagine. Now, down here, this is the Bloodwood node. Now, I would like very much to be gathering Bloodwood. It's exactly what you think. Logs covered with gl glowing red veins must be processed before they can be used. As one might imagine, I can't uh, imagine building anything about uh, with with uh, wood with throbbing red veins on it. It would be particularly uh, nice. Uh, but we're going to have to bring that down to the city over here. Now, we may later on want to defend it, but currently we don't actually have a means to defend it. Now, this is where we need to start processing things. We need to have wood warpers. Now, the red area here is uh, where we can't build anything, and we can't build it even if only a part of it is under red, because there's not enough power over here. So for that, we're going to need to expand out our power. Uh, and th these concepts will be very familiar to you if you've played any amount of They Are Billions. Uh, it does seem to, to uh, draw a great deal of inspiration from uh, games like that, and again, uh, like Factorio. There we go. Uh, inputs into the wood warpers. And there we go. We've got uh, our achievement there. Let's come out of building mode. Uh, I should also probably pop my med... Uh, oh, I haven't got any med kits. Uh, or rather, healing packs. I am a robot, after all. Uh, there we go. Let's grab these, and we can drop all of this off into the town's inventory, which will be good. Now, we are starting to uh, drop down in terms of our food, which is going to be a problem, and uh, a problem that I would like to fix. Uh, right, we are going to want to deliver this wood over to our core there, so that we can actually use it for future construction. And to that end, I'm going to do something like this, bring this down, and tie it in. Now, one of the things I really like about this game, and I've only really briefly touched on it, is the fact that the city can take off. Now, it doesn't move around this map. You take off and you go to a completely new map. 
but uh, everything on these tiles, and these tiles can be expanded with the investment of resources, comes with you. You have a certain weight limit and it costs a certain amount of fuel dependent on uh, how much stuff you're bringing with you. Uh, the stuff that's in your, your cargo or any buildings on this, uh, on this platform come along. Now, buildings can be upgraded. These buildings right now, it's not worth bringing them. They're very, very cheap to make. I could build those wherever I go. But as I start investing resources to upgrade them, it will become increasingly more important for me to keep them with me, uh, the upgraded versions. Thankfully, you can just yoink them and pop them onto your your platform. But one, one word to the wise, uh, while I was while I was testing out the game to, to try and get the lay of the land, the amount of times I moved the building and then forgot to, uh, and then moved it back or, or, or vice versa, whatever, the amount of times I forgot to reset up the inputs and the outputs. Uh, you can die in this game. And that constituted a, at least like 80% of my deaths were because I had disrupted some critical industry and forgotten to hook it back up again. Not my uh, finest moment, I will confess. But here we go. Let's uh, clear you guys out, and you know I'll punch you guys. There we are. Did you leave me some goodies? You did. Right. Now these are the only threats. If that were the case, it would be very easy for us to make progress. No, instead, oh, I don't really want to play with you, but you might want to play with me, and I'm not about that right now. Uh, instead, the uh, threat, real threat, comes in the form of raids, which will happen semi-frequently, depending on the uh, settings that you've got, or they might not happen at all again you can just turn them off and you'll still have the uh, little little uh, creatures around and about but you're not going to have to have any large scale concerns in terms of defense now raids if you're familiar with uh, with they are billions pretty much exactly the same a large press of enemies will show up and will try to ruin your day and it's very rude of them but you know it is what it is all right, now we want to bring uh, this all the way down here and then all the way up along. And then we're going to tie it in to this over here because we're not really making full use out of these. So bringing in an extra... Oh, it's raining. I didn't even know it could do that. Uh, we're not making full use of this and we want to try and try and get as, uh, the throughput saturated if we can. Now, have a working food plant. Also, have a working stone worker. Also, reach a city size of tribe. Well, now, this little area over here is nice, nicely defended. I feel that this would be a good place for us to pop down some food. But, of course, we're going to need to bring some power over here. So, let's uh, tuck in a little Tesla tower right there. Perfect. Now, uh, nothing can, can get to us here. Th this little land, it's, it's not accessible to the enemy either. At least I've not seen any flying enemies yet. But uh, don't take my word for it. I, I've played very little of the game overall so uh, it could easily be the case that that would lead to great amounts of death. Uh, we also want a food plant. Now the food plant can live eh, let's pop you down about here I think. Now we are losing food. We're also losing power. That's going to be something we're going to have to address relatively soon actually. Let's bring this down and I'm going to kind of build this out in such a way that we're going to be able to uh, expand it and have more food farms delivering food down here to the food plant. Now, thankfully, the food plant, uh, we can mix the belts. As you can see, we're not actually filling this belt with, with wood, even though we have uh, greatly increased the amount of bloodwood supplied to uh, the, the actual timbers. They're coming out every now and then, so we can probably safely have the uh, food plant make use of that, uh, that uh, conveyor rail as well. But we do need to get a generator. So, let us have a look at that. Oh, we haven't unlocked generators yet. Probably going to get there once we've got the food plant up and running. Uh, in the meanwhile, let's place down at least another... Well, I guess only one. I was going to say at least another two uh, houses, but this will do. We do need more workers in general. Workers eat food and uh, many other things. City outpost level has been increased. That has given us the wooden turret. Fantastic. The wooden wall. And additionally, wooden gates have given us the generator. That's the important one. We've got flux vats. That's very useful. This is flux over here. We use it for a lot of things. Power generator. Oh, thank goodness. Right. Okay. So we are saved, uh, basically. Now, the generators do have an area effect and they consume flux. We're currently producing 26.5 flux. It's an interesting resource. Uh, the basis of all dream tech, this substance is extracted from the dream realm and can warp reality to make unphysical things happen. Kind of like the way orcs work. 
in a strange way. Uh, this is a global resource and does not require transportation or, well, we are limited in, in how we can store it. You get it as tax from your people, but you can also specifically harvest it. But some buildings will use flux uh, more than others. We'll plot these two down. There we go. We're now generating a good bit of power. Now, uh, let's have a look at you. You are production insufficient resource. You saw nothing. Nothing was seen. Nothing happened. We we are just doing so well. This this is backlogged because we've just got such a great supply. It's got nothing to do with the fact that I did the thing that I said about not doing earlier. Uh, it really is easy. Take my word for it, or don't. Just uh, honestly, I'm disappointed in myself. You don't need to be disappointed in me as well. Okay, I'm saving you the F. <laughs> Uh, it is uh, and shockingly easy to do, though, unfortunately. One thing I would love to see in this is a bit more of an indication um, that that's happening. Uh, not specifically just a, an icon above the unit, because as you've probably already seen, you can spend a lot of time away from base. You, you are quite mobile, so some sort of audio alert to uh, make you aware that, hey, there's a building or some sort of pop-up on the screen. This is in before, in editing, I noticed the pop-up on the screen. I'm like, oh, uh, well... Uh, by the way, I keep those things in because I feel that you should learn from my own mistakes. <laughs> right, we've got a raid approaching. Uh, let's have a look. Where are you going to be coming? Oh, you're coming from this direction? Okay, that's not too bad. We can set up uh, a bit of raid defense. So the early raids, uh, we're on threat level zero. So I'm not expecting this to be particularly bad. However, one of the less, less agreeable aspects of the game... Is that walls need power? I, I don't understand this one myself, but it's a, it's a fact. Walls require power. Uh, let's pop that one down here. And I mean, the, the automated turrets, I completely understand them needing power. Sure, that, that, makes, that makes sense. But the walls, though? Uh, it, is, it is basically uh, uh, the, the formula of the R billions, let's be honest, though. Uh, we'll, we'll add in a little bit of extra defense around here. Am I going to add in an extra tower? I can afford it, so sure. Two towers will, will give us a lot of help in dealing with the uh, scallywags. Over here, uh, I think we'll do the same. Really shouldn't be placing down this many, I guess. But here I am doing it anyway. Uh, there we are. Again, learn from my mistakes. Right, okay. Now we are definitely going to be want, uh, want to be in the first person mode to go and deal with the raid. The raid is going to come and uh, cause us some problems. Hello! Ooh, that's a uh, ruin over there. Ruins are very interesting places. We can get uh, permanent upgrades for your character. Now, the nice thing about the wooden towers is they are incredibly weak, but they have explosive AOE, uh, AOE attacks, which is really quite nice for dealing with the uh, small... Uh, hordes especially. Nope. There we go. Hi. Uh, let's try and deal with you before you become a big problem. I may have caused a bit of a, an issue for myself, but uh, it's fine. I kind of want to lure them over to the turrets and have the turrets do uh, a large amount of the work. Now, they will do a little bit of damage to my uh, gear. Oh, actually, no. Well, they did a type. They basically scratched the wood paneling. I'm not going to worry about that one too much. But as you've noticed, some some buildings you can demolish, not just uh, not just gathering resources off uh, dead enemies. You can also, through various upgrades, get more stuff off the enemy. So you can definitely tailor your playstyle in game by uncovering certain important uh, important features of the map. Not all maps are the same. Not all maps will have all of the resources that are available to them. Uh, for example, that will give me quite a lot of interesting stuff. But here we are, chemical. Ruins. These ancient ruins have some machinery that is still partially functional. With the right materials, you may be able to produce something, but you can only activate it once or twice before it becomes unusable. Alternatively, you could scrap the whole place for whatever resources you can find. I'd like to craft something. Uh, okay, I can make a sniper bow. Uh, it's a better ranged weapon. I'm going to need 20 upgrade materials and 25 feather crystal. Okay, that's quite a lot. Berserker module. It's uh, some sort of... It just gives me extra damage. Okay, but damage received 100%. Not, not great. Uh, it needs some more old world scraps. A lot of upgrade materials. Uh, deployable turret. A small turret in the field for some extra firepower. It looks like I can actually... Oh, it's... Uh, is this perhaps something... I get four of them. 
Hmm, do they do they get used? I, I'm not really down with consumables for something like this. Now the engine fuel. I'm not sure if there, there is a way for you to make that yourself later on. But having this is imperative for you to actually leave the area. But we're going to come back to this. I definitely want this. And we should be able to get the upgrade materials and the feather crystal. Uh, so we will we will be back. Don't go anywhere, Ruin. Not that you really can. You're, you're a static structure. But still, I felt compelled to uh, issue the request, nevertheless. All right, let's uh, head down here. I would like to get some stone, as uh, you saw. We need to get some feather crystal for the sniper weapon. I'm using the range weapon much more than I'm using the melee weapon, and that is probably going to be a trend that continues. So I feel that going for the ranged upgrade would be just a wise move. Now, have a working stone worker. Okay, well, that's what we're working towards right now. Also, reach city size tribe. Additionally, open the dream archives. Well, okay, let me uh, quickly do that for you. So we can have a look in here for all the various things that we've got. We've got new buildings, uh, well, sorry, new items. We've got all of the buildings that we can look at. Uh, doesn't uh, do too much. It looks pretty and it doesn't block movement. Useful for city planning and making sure you have room to move freely. Oh, that's actually quite cool. I haven't even looked at that. We've got uh, the various level ups on the buildings. I haven't shown leveling things up just yet, but uh, we will. Uh, oh, okay, so we've got production recipes for various items. Okay, produce an apartment. Produced at house. Ah, different level, uh, different level buildings. I like, I like. Okay, well, let's hook up the feather. Oh, well, actually, this won't be feather crystal specifically. It'll be feather stone, which we then need to further refine. So let's get this going. Have we? Oh no, we've got insufficient workers. Whop whop. Let's go and take care of that then, shall I? Uh, let's go. I love the wonky houses. They're so good. Uh, they're a little bit squiff, you know. We all know how I how I like things being a teeny bit squiff. Uh, let's pop that there, and then pop that one there, just for a little bit of visual variety. All right, let's get the food going all the way all the way around. And I guess I could put it back in. Huh? I wonder how that will affect stuff. Can I have this going? Oh, I can. <laughs> That's going to be very interesting. Now, I don't, I don't know... <laughs> will, will this just keep it in... Ah, uh, it's going to be lovely. It's going to look so cool. It's just going to be in constant motion. The other thing I could do is if there was some way of filter... Oh. What if I ran the food past it and then deposited the food? Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. It's certainly something we could do. Uh, we're currently leveling up. We are going to be able to take ourselves to the next uh, level, which will unlock the research lab, the tar extractor, the star tar research and the star struck tar very well either way though we should now have the population required to get this all working so let's go ahead and bring this down and up and around so that we can run it behind some stone workers now these are each going to take an extra two people uh also we're going to need some extra power down here as well so let's pop a test tower right there oh there we are we've reached the village level fantastic uh, now, we've already seen what that's going to unlock, so I'm not going to focus on it just yet. I would like, instead... To, oh. <laughs> it would help if I paid attention, wouldn't it? Uh, okay. Well, we are going to need probably some flux vats, then. This building specializes in distilling flux, so we'll get a little bit more flux out of it uh, for the sake of a worker. Now, that might be worth our investment. They're a very small building. We can kind of tuck them in wherever we want. There's all sorts of places that we can just pop one of these or, or two of these even. And they should give us a decent return. Let's have a look. Uh, yes, yeah, plus four. Well, that's, that's quite a lot in exchange for just one power. I'm, I'm totally on board with that. Uh, that is going to push things up for us nice and fast. However, I'm not, not liking this. I'm not liking seeing that you do not have food. So let's just make sure that you've got plenty of food. And in fact, I'm just going to delete that part and remake this. And we're not going to push it back into the uh, into the city. That, that was just an interesting little experiment there. But there we go. Uh, right. Now, this, this line is actually starting to back up a little bit, but not... Yeah, I don't think it's too bad right now, but we're definitely not going to be able to add a second one. Uh, but with that, we should be able to at least start making some feather stone into feather crystal. Uh, so with that, we will then add a new line, and I guess we'll just bring it straight down there. 
Oh. Of course, yes, we uh, like the flux even for that. Okay, we are actually uh, running really low on flux then in that case, so perhaps it would be best for me to add another flux vat as well. Even though I don't really want to take up the, the population right now, it feels necessary. There we are. Let's uh, keep bringing this down. Eventually, we're going to see some less. Oh, it would also help. <laughs> yes. Uh, Shh. Oh, nothing. There we go. We've got the stone worker. Building a research lab will be high on the agenda, and that will give us access to the research tree. As you can see, there are so many things. So many things. You have to... You, you, you really do have to specialise your, your city to certain degrees. You're going to go refining uh, materials from one to the next to the next to the next, and each layer seems to require ever more ingredients. It's not a simple wood to next best wood to next best wood and so on and so forth. It's like wood, then wood plus tar and so on and so forth as, as you refine increasingly uh, potent construction materials. All right, there we go. All right, so that took us a little bit, a little bit uh, more than I would like. Use the on-off tool to disable any building. Sure, okay. Just for you. Uh, can I disable this? Womp. There we go. Let's put that back on. We also got to get a workshop up and running so we can craft some things. On the note of crafting, there is a crafting screen right now. All we can make is repair kits. Right now, we don't need any. But we do have a raid coming from uh, this rather open direction over here. I'm not, not a big fan of that one. Uh, I'm also a really not a big fan of the fact that I, I desperately need more... Uh, uh, materials to really get anything of worth down these walls <laughs> yeah we're not we're not getting that mm. vexing okay well we're making 32 over time but uh, i think our city is going to take a, a little bit of a pounding here which is unfortunate i'm going to clear the way so i can get up there and start dealing with the raid further away that'll give me more of an opportunity to clear it out the worst of it before it approaches the city uh, you can take the fight to them. There's, there's no no great uh, problem with that. I will also gather up all of these uh, looty bits while I'm here. Oh, auto-saving. Okay. Uh, incoming raid. There we go. Now, the raids are going to keep getting worse. That is evidenced by the, uh, the whole uh, threat level increasing. Eventually, these swarms will become unmanageable. And it's, it's at that point that you really want to be like, okay, well, time, for, time to leave. Uh, and, and start preparing a little bit ahead of time Know when you're going to leave so that you can uh, have all of the buildings that you really want to save on the uh, on the platform and a healthy uh, resource stockpile as well because you are going to need it. You will run into problems in the next land if you leave without any food in the stockpile, for example. Where are you? I'm going to wait for you to come to me. There we go. Because I don't want to bring all of the other uh, enemies with us. Ouch. Good shot. Go. Let's uh, clear this up. Shouldn't be too hard. Right, I'm going to get in there with my fist. There we go. Perfect. I'm not exactly perfect. I did take quite a lot of damage. I've not noticed if we heal over time, but I will try and pay attention to that right now. I can use med kit packs and, uh, well, I say med packs, repair kits, and they are quite good at it. They do have a cooldown though, so do be aware they're not they're not uh, a, uh, a complete guarantee of survival if you've got them uh, you are going to have to wait before you use them again so uh, try to be sparing with them if you can be uh, let's clear up this little area down here Oop, threat level increased to two now we do want to start worrying about that a little bit time is going to just increase the threat level that is not going to uh, become any easier to manage over time and you can't really um, play the game in such a way as to manage the threat level, like by not provoking them. For example, in Factory, you just don't produce pollution, the biters aren't really going to become a big issue. Um, you know, obviously, there are some exceptions to that, but by and large, the less pollution you... Uh, pollu uh, oh, the pollution, not pollution. Uh, there we are. The less a pollution you make then the less aggressive the biters are going to become. All right, let's pop down another few of these, if I can afford them. I can't almost, though. Come on, there we go. All right, now let's get these hooked up. There we are. 
and there, and down there we go. That'll be a little bit better. All right, let's have a quick gander over here. We do need to build a research lab. That's a, a, a great requirement, but we are also hitting our maximum when it comes to housing. So how about we increase the housing as well? I'm thinking, yes, we've got more than enough to build three of these, so that should not be uh, a problem for us. Let's uh, hook all of these up. There we go. Perfect. Right. Now then, we are drawing out a lot more power than we're producing, so let's uh, take care of that before it becomes an issue. Uh, can I squeeze that in there? No, I can't. Uh, okay. Well, let's pop this power plant over here then. Oh. Well, I would like to, but uh, we will get there in time maybe once more people move in we will get more and more uh flux but uh, right now when well i mean we're more or less stable that's not good enough we want to be producing power not not uh hanging stable with it but that's going to require some more flux fans so let's go and drop down one or two more of these uh, have we got any any room around here? Yeah, we've got a little bit of space that I can fit a few in. There we are. Now we're obviously pulling out quite a lot more power, but it should generally be okay. We've added a decent amount of houses. I will try and upgrade some of the houses. That might be a bit of a better use, because the houses are going to stay with us no matter what, so they're a good candidate for upgrades, uh, I feel. Uh, let's get this down about here, right at the back there. Ah, that's a shame won't allow me to place this now uh so i guess i could place one down here i suppose and i might have to uh well we're gonna have to wait on that first right what do we need to upgrade the houses then we go into the upgrade mode hover over things we are going to need uh a researched material okay well that's a good incentive for us to get the research lab up and running then uh, let's go ahead and build uh, the tar extractor. Where be the research lab? There we go. We're going to need an awful lot of flux. Okay, well, now is a good time for us to continue our exploration then in that case. Let's head up in this direction. One of the uh, remaining locations we haven't properly investigated. There's always something for you to do in this game, and that's something I really do appreciate. A lot of games uh, of this nature, um, city builders, any, any kind of factory builder... There are periods of time where you're kind of just grinding for materials. So it's nice to have uh, a completely different activity that I can investigate. Uh, right now I'm exploring, for example. And that was something I quite liked in uh, They Are Billions as well. Uh, that you, you could be focusing on, on building up your town, or you could be focusing on taking out your, your squad to smack some doom cities around. Uh, it, there was always something you could be doing instead of just waiting to have enough materials to build the next thing on your to-do list. There we go. Okay, well, we've found another area for wood. Don't really need it right now. In fact, we're actually doing quite well on that, so uh, we'll ignore that one for the time being. There we are. Uh, but luck-wise, I think we're at the point now where we can go back to the city. I'll just grab the last little bits, but we'll earmark this location for a little bit more exploration later. But yes, clearly we are healing. It might be that we're healing when we're close to the city. Uh, that could definitely be the case. So let's get in there and see what we can do. All right, there we are. Now then, we are going to want a science lab. Now, my only recommendation, again, the science lab is probably a building that you're going to want to take with you. Right, let's go and research. We want this, starwood. It's going to be made from... Uh, bloodwood and tar. Uh, that is going to be there. There we are. Right. Hopefully. Oh, no research selected. Did I not? No, I did. There we go. Uh, okay. Let's build the research lab. Uh, refine uh, drep remains and pick a cart. What? Pick a cart? Not sure what that one's about. Then. You can pick carts and their contents will be added to your inventory through the tools menu or by pressing... Really? Well, that's lovely. Let's try and do that now. Uh, can I... Can I press... P ah, there, there we go. Marvellous. I didn't know that was a thing. Well, that's uh, very useful. Okay. Well, we could manually bring stuff over here, but honestly, I think it would be better if we just temporarily 
Well, I could just move this over here, actually. So, yeah, let's uh, let's temporarily pop this right there. And I'm going to hook up an input for some of the wood that we're going to need. We are also going to require the tar. Now, the tar is a new gathered resource. Here, the tar extractor extracts star-struck tar from the soil under the city. I could just pop this over here and uh, just hoover it up, or I could have a separate line. Um, actually, no, we, we are going to pop it here. So let's let's have that be added to this line as well. Now, there is a reason why I'm willing to do that, and you might be wondering, like, well, okay, isn't that going to mess this line up? Well, no, as it happens. There is a certain thing that we're going to be able to make with it. But that will require an upgraded... Uh, an upgraded... Uh, wood uh, production plant, a wood warper. Uh, we have to have a wood warper of level 2, and that will allow us to use the tar and the wood to make starstruck tar. Right now, that's being consumed by the research lab. So let's go ahead and place down a wood warper. And I'm going to have a specific wood warper. This one is, well, I'm going to have it out here, like separate from the rest. But this is going to be one that we take with us, because I want to upgrade it. So we're going to need a little bit more flux. Uh, we're still bringing in plenty of flux, though we are now losing a lot of power as well. So uh, I should probably try and deal with that before I do anything else. Uh, let's place a power plant over here. Come on. Just up to 46. Saw you there for a second. Haha, -ha, got you. Oh. Insufficient workers. Well, that's quite the, the problem then. Uh, let's go ahead. I, I'm starting to see the benefit of roads at this point. <laughs> right, let's place a couple of these down. Now, this is going to drain my power at an increasingly dangerous rate, but hopefully we'll be okay. And we will see, of course. Come on. Come on, I need more taxes. Provide the taxes. Go. Right, that should get us the workers that we need, or which would in turn, get us the power that we need. Hopefully. Uh, we will see. This will uh, push us up a little bit further. Come on. There we go. Got a little bit of power coming in. Just need a tiny bit more. By a tiny bit, I mean a lot more, actually. Uh, but hopefully, we should be able to get to that reasonably soon. Now, this is where things are going to get interesting. To upgrade you, I'm going to need the flux. We, we will get there, but uh, that is going to take a little bit. We're going to have this line, well, I, I suppose I could have this line just go ahead and connect up, I guess. Uh, oops, that wasn't quite what I wanted. And I am going to be finicky about that one. I'm sorry, everyone who doesn't care about finickiness. I do. Uh, well, actually, at this part, I guess, I guess it makes more sense for, for this one to be the upgraded one, really. Uh, okay. You can now expand your city area to make more room for your housing and production buildings. Select the city expansion from the infrastructure category and the build menu and choose it the expansion you want to purchase on the map. What? I, couldn't I do that before? Oh, no, that's a street. Right. Okay. Okay, no, I, I, I agree. We have got a raiding coming, though, and I'm a little bit concerned about that. But uh, I'm going to move this down a tad. We will go and deal with the raid in just a second, though. All right, let's get all of this hooked up there. There we go. Uh, we are going to need that that tiny bit of power because the last thing we want is to run out of power in the middle of a raid. There we go. That will do. We are now a little bit below in terms of our overall production of food. Uh, kind of wobbling. Kind of wobbling. Perhaps if we increased this, what would we need? We need Featherstone for that one. Okay, that's a bit out of our, our reach right now. Let's go ahead and upgrade this. Uh, the raid is on its way. Uh, some buildings can produce more than one recipe. Uh, after additional recipes are unlocked, click on the production recipe name to select a different one. Okay. Some recipes require certain add-ons to be built before they can be produced in that building. Very well. I would uh, absolutely like you to produce starwood for me. Go ahead. Enjoy. There we are. Oh, unfortunately, we're going to get all of that, that tar down there. And it's going to stick. I've gone the wrong way, haven't I? Yes, I have. Now let's get around here. We're going to see some buildings taking a bit of damage. Let's get up there as quick as we can. Yeah. Well, I mean, they attacked from a unfortunate direction. Nevertheless. We're fine. There we go. Go away. All right, let's go deal with the uh, next raid. Oh, there's three this time. Okay. 
gonna try and take you out as quickly as we can. We've lost the uh, the wood on this side. That's a bit of a shame. But uh, yeah, that is death. Oh, the walls are actually distracting you. I'm actually okay with that. To be honest, that's yeah, not a bad use of the walls. There we go. Done and done. I could possibly throw down a bit of extra defense there, but I don't really feel that we need it. I think we're doing okay. And now this part may be a bit less so. Let's try and lure them, kite them over to our turret to help out. There we go. And then we'll just get in there with our fists and finish the job. Oof, okay, there we go. But with that raid dealt with, I'm afraid that, uh, looking at the time, we are all out of time, and that's going to be the end of the episode. I really would have loved to have been able to showcase the city taking off for you, but it seems that Dream Engines has a little bit more content than I can fit into a single first taste, so perhaps a good candidate for an extended first taste? Do let me know what you think down below, as always, with a comment or a like on the video, but that is going to have to be it for us for today. Are we going to be able to to continue to repel the ever-increasing difficulty of the DREP attack. I am going to keep calling them DERPs. You've no idea how much force of will is involved in me making sure I call them DREP instead of DERP. <sighs> Nevertheless, I really, really do hope you have enjoyed. And if we do see a bit of interest in this, then we may well come back for an extended first days. Who knows? Maybe even a series. Do let me know what you think down below. But that is going to be it from me. And until next time... Do take care.